Okay. All right. We start today, Genesis 21. Now, if we can review very briefly here where we've been. So back in Genesis 19, we had the story of Sodom and Gomorrah and how Abraham interceded and that enabled Lot to be saved, but Sodom is, is, is judged. Uh, and then we had another case in Genesis 20. Uh, if I remember last time, it was Abimelech taking Sarah if you remember that whole story, but the, the key part of it is how it concludes. It again concludes with uh, Abraham's intercession, which is very interesting. That salvation comes to Abra to Abimelech and his household, and God heals them and restores them because of the intercession of Abraham. He specifically tells him, go to Abraham, return his wife, and he'll pray for you, and then I'll heal you, and he does that. And so in the last two stories, there's been a theme of this, Abraham interceding uh, for others and bringing salvation to people who deserve to be judged. Mm -hmm. So um, that's where we kind of left off there. And now we pick up to Genesis 21, um, where now we see the Lord had fulfilled his promise. Remember, it was a year earlier that the Lord had promised that in a year from now, Sarah will give birth. And now we get to see the fulfillment of that promise so let's pick it up genesis 21 uh bob thomas would you read that for us verses one to seven okay <clears throat> the lord visited sarah as he had said and the lord did to sarah as he had promised and sarah conceived and bore abraham a son in his old age at the time of which god had spoken to him abraham called the name of his son who was born to him whom Sarah bore him, Isaac, uh, yeah, Isaac. And Abraham circumcised his son Isaac when he was eight days old, as God had commanded him. Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born to him. And Sarah said, God has made laughter for me. Everyone who hears will laugh over me. And she said, who would have said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse children? Yet I have borne him a son in his old age. All right, All right. let's talk about this here. What the Lord, uh, you'll notice um, the the focus is is not on uh, Abraham and Sarah's actions, but on on the Lord. Um, so let's say the Lord uh, does here. Well, first, in verse one. He keeps his promises. Yeah, yeah. The Lord, the Lord keeps his promises, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. That's that's no small thing to remember. That's the point of these stories. You begin to see that he made a promise that Sarah would have a, a, a child, and then he kept his promise. And the Lord, uh, he visited Sarah. Again, it says, as he said, and the Lord did to Sarah. as he promised and you'll notice the, the the word of god is 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 the focus here um and so what happens uh so now we turn to so sarah conceives and what are we told about this conception that makes it strange it in, in her whole old age she was 90 yeah. Yeah, so uh, conceives and bears a son, and the emphasis is on um, that phrase, uh, in, 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 his, in his old age. Again, and at, a, at the time which uh, God had spoken. Again, you see that he said, he promised, he spoke. Mm -hmm. All right, so then we have turned. So Sarah conceives and bears a son in, in his old age. Now we turn to um, Abraham. What does it say about him? Um, he circumcised Isaac, as it's. Yes, but before he does that, called the name of Isaac. Yeah. Uh, Abraham called the name of his son Isaac, called. <laughs> Names his son Isaac, and what does Isaac mean? Laughter. Yeah, he laughs. 
Um, and then he, uh, Abraham does what? Um, he circumcises. As told on the eighth day. As, as uh, yes, Isaac, on the eighth, eighth day, which is where the command is here, eighth day. All right, and then what else are we told about Abraham? 100 years old. He's 100 years old. Mm -hmm. Just a kid. Yes, when Isaac born. Now we turn back to Sarah. And uh, she has the final word in this paragraph. Sarah then speaks. And what does she say? God's made laughter for me. Yeah, God has made laughter for me. And everyone who hears will laugh over me. Everyone will laugh. Um, who would have believed? Who would have said? Mm -hmm. Okay, so here's the question that uh, Sarah would nurse children. <laughs> Again, this the whole thing. She's 90 years old. Uh, all right, so why? Let's let's talk briefly about this. God had promised Abraham um, when he was 75 years old that he would have uh, many descendants, and he doesn't fulfill begin to fulfill that promise until he's a hundred years old and so the, the question is why does why such a long wait i mean we have a world to save here we've got lots of things to accomplish here why does god wait till this moment to bring forth Isaac? well wouldn't, wouldn't he have wanted to have it so unusual that you would know god's hand was in it hmm. yeah i was speaking to uh, prove his faithfulness so he yep. stayed faithful throughout that time. Yeah, it proves his faithfulness, but you, you, the whole thing of the the impossibility of it, isn't it? Is, is there's a uh, there's no, I mean, sixty five is pushing it, but um, yeah, this is an impossible. She, she's she was barren when she was help when when she was a woman of childbearing age, and now she's well beyond that. Um, and it is absolutely ridiculous. It's the impossible. And so you see clearly this is God. So even there's no, there's no even mention by, did you notice there's not even a mention of Abraham doing anything. We know he laid with his wife, but it doesn't mention it at all. I don't know if you caught that. Usually it does mention that, you know, he goes into her and she has a child. There's no mention of him doing, of Abraham and Sarah doing anything. Every, it's the Lord doing it all. The Lord visited. The Lord did to Sarah as promised. God has made laughter for me. He's the one who did this. Um, and that's sort of the point of it, isn't it? This is an act of grace. Um, maybe he made maybe he made Abraham wait 25 years for the same reason he wait makes us wait when we ask him something. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, there's something to be gained from uh, in the final analysis when he finally comes through after we've struggled with continuing to trust him when he looks at us basically and says do you have any other questions yeah <laughs> you, know, you say no i don't <laughs> it, 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 yeah there is a sense of do you do you trust me and if you trust me you can wait right the sense of waiting um and and when so, and if they were to abandon this then you would say well you know there there was no faith there they did not believe uh, you can argue whether the person making the promise should be believed, but if someone makes a promise and they say, wait here till I come back, I promise I'll be back, and you wait there for a long period of time means you believe what they said. Uh, if you wait there for a year and then you leave, it means you didn't really believe what they said, and, and they maybe you shouldn't believe what they say. But in God's case, of course, we know he's not a human who can be thwarted. He's not someone who can be overcome. Um, there's reasons why we shouldn't trust people. One is that they lie to us, but the other is that they're they're just weak. They can't keep the promise even though they intend to. They're just not able to do it. Um, so that's why, but but God is is true and he's able. There's nothing keeping him. There's no force that can stop him. 
he will do exactly when he wants to. And so making them wait really shows this is Abraham believed. I, we really clearly see that uh, Abraham believes. This is all God, and he believes it. I so. I forget. How old was Abraham when he had the son with Sarah's handmaid? Ishmael. That would have been probably about 14 years earlier or so. So I think he was about 86. Okay. That, yeah. yeah. Pastor, if um, people were living to six or seven, uh, seven eight hundred years, why is it hard to believe that a woman would conceive at and and um, nurse a baby at seventy five? Well, they weren't living to seven eight hundred years. That was back in Genesis Noah before the flood. So that's like a thousand years earlier they were living that way. Um, but even then, we don't know that people were living that way, or if just those particular people were living that way. Hmm. So it's not necessarily that they, they they make a stress that, you know, the, they, they mention the age of their years because it is remarkable. And you really see God's hand in that line, his blessing, his favor upon them, though they all died. But that doesn't necessarily mean that everyone was living okay. a thousand years old. Um, but even then, after the flood, um, you'll notice the age go down dramatically. Um, and you have... Uh, um, even though the man is older, maybe he's 90 years old when he um, gives birth to his first son, Doesn't we, we never told the age of the women. So, was um, Abraham when he died, Pastor? How what? How old was Abraham when he died? Um, was he about 175, was it? I can't remember how old exactly he was. So we had it listed somewhere, didn't we? Did we have yeah. it before? Get some genealogy. And with the chat with the genealogies way back when. Way back, way back, way back. Let's see if we can find it here. Um, 14, 13. Boy, we've been with Abraham for a while here. Let's see. We got here. Genesis. Yeah. Abraham was a hunt. Hey, 175. There you go. Ooh, I'm impressed. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um age of the birth of that special son but you'll notice look at the ages when these guys gave birth to their the child that would carry on the line you know shem's 100 years old that's old but after that it's 35 30 34 30 32 30 79 29 and then tara is 70 which is older and then abram's 100 so i'm uh, pretty sure tara had a a harem of young people, <laughs> yeah, it could be, could be. Yeah, well, no, Terry had uh, he he had multiple wives, right? Because he had uh, Sarah was a uh, wife too of his. Yeah. Uh, all right, so let's come back to our text here, and let's pick up our next section, uh, eight to fourteen. Uh, Liz, you want to get that for us? Sure. And the child grew and was weaned, and Abraham made a feast day on the day that Isaac was weaned. But Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, whom she had borne to Abraham, laughing. So she said to Abraham, cast out this slave woman with her son, for the son of this slave woman shall not be heir with my son Isaac. And the thing was very displeasing to Abraham on account of his son. But God said to Abraham, be not displeased because of the boy and because of your slave woman. Whatever says, Sarah says to you, do as she tells you, for, the, for through Isaac whoo, shall your offspring be named. And I will make nations of the son of the slave woman also, because he is your offspring. So Abraham rose early in the morning and took bread and a skin of water and gave it to Hagar, putting it on her shoulder along with the child and sent her away. And she departed and wandered in the wilderness of Beersheba. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So the child, that's uh, Isaac, uh, grew and was weaned. What does it mean that he was weaned? No longer nursing. Yeah, no longer. How old is that now? No longer nursing. Well, back then it was like two years old. Yeah, I think I was, that's about right. About, about two years or so. All right. So um, and what happens now? We have a little bit of drama here. Sarah wants um, the, the child that he had with Hagar gone. Yeah, along with the castle of the slave woman with her son. Okay, but why? Uh, why? 
so that he won't be joined here with Isaac? Um, that's not what it says here. What What is the motivation for Sarah? What's that again? You're laughing. He's She's laughing. So Sarah sees Ishmael. Um, you'll notice the, the emphasis is not on, on Ishmael per se, but Hagar, the, the son of Hagar, the Egyptian. Yeah. Um, uh, and he was laughing. Um, what's the sense here? What's going on there? Uh, maybe Sarah thought they were making fun of Isaac or Sarah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, mocking um, the whole scene, I guess. I mean, it is kind of funny, you know, but uh, there's a certain mockery of um, it's similar to what happened when remember what happened when uh, Isaac was with Ishmael was conceived. What happened? Remember back then? Yeah, Hagar was not very nice to Sarah, and she uh, picked on her and sort of gloated that she was pregnant and Sarah couldn't be. Yeah, this is kind of a, a, a recollection of that where she begins to look at Sarah with contempt. So she's a slave woman who's looking on uh, Sarah, whose name, if you remember, means princess. She's of royalty. She's the chosen one, and she is looking on her with contempt. And and now we see the same thing with Ishmael. He is carrying on that contempt, um, holding the chosen uh, woman and son in in contempt for that. Wasn't yeah. this whole thing Sarah's idea? Say again. Wasn't this whole thing Sarah's doing? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Of course. That's why she had to wait so long. <laughs> I. I... Galatian says there's a there's a lot of heavy stuff behind this whole thing more than what we see in in uh in Genesis. Yeah, do you have that right in front of you, Bob? Rob? Yeah, I do. You want to read that for us? And what's the I don't, I don't I have the well I I'm not uh Galatians 4 25 through 31. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, we're I, I know what you're talking about. 4 25 to 31. Yeah. But that's okay. I, would you read that for us? I, I just gotta get to it, yeah. Okay. While he's doing that. Um, so Sarah speaks Ishmael, uh, holy contempt, and then she says, Sarah speaks to Abraham um, and says to do what? Uh, Pick him up. Yeah, cast mm -hmm. out the slave woman and her son. Uh, and the reason is he... he Yes, as you mentioned earlier, Teresa, he'll not be heir with my son Isaac. Okay. He will not be heir. And that's that's the that's that's on the surface, but there's something much heavier. Um, yes, theologically. Uh, yeah, read that for us, please. Galatians four twenty one through thirty one. It says, "Tell me what you want to be. Tell me, you who want to be under the law, do you not listen to the law? For it is written that Abraham had two sons, one by the bondwoman and one by the free woman." But the son of the bondwoman was born according to the flesh, and the son of the free woman through the promise. This is allegorically speaking, for these women are two covenants, one proceeding from Mount Sinai, that's the old covenant, bearing children who are to be slaves. She is Hagar. Now this Hagar is Mount Sinai in Arabia and corresponds to the present Jerusalem, for she is in slavery with her children. But the Jerusalem above is free. She is our mother, for it is written, Rejoice, barren woman who does not bear. Break forth and shout, you who are not in labor. For more numerous are the children of, of the desolate than, are the one, than of the one who has a husband. And you, brethren, like Isaac, are children of promise. But as at that time, he who was born according to the flesh persecuted him who was born according to the spirit. So it is now also. Mm -hmm. But what does the scripture say? Cast out the bondwoman and her son. For the son of the bondwoman shall not be an heir with the son of the free woman. So mm -hmm. then, brethren, we are not children of the bondwoman, but of the free woman. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
hey, God pictures the old covenant and doing things according to the flesh to get what's done. And, and Isaac is the grace of God. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, so that's great. Yeah, Hagar. So Hagar is, um, is a picture or a symbol of the of the old covenant. Um, that's Mount Sinai. And the uh, the works, um, which is what the, the the he's he's basically he's. Ironically, he is saying that the Jews who are rejecting the new covenant, are like the slave woman. And you Christians are the uh, are children of the free woman. We are of a different covenant. Sarah is a picture of the new covenant. Um, sometimes referred to a, a mountain. If you want a mountain, we'll try Mount Zion. It's one of grace and joy and freedom. This is works and slavery. Um very very interesting and so and the result is that it's 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 very interesting the persecution is coming from um the son of the slave woman he's that he references that his laughter his mockery of isaac is a form of persecution of him and so this hostility that the world has toward the believers is typically from um these religions that are based on works mm -hmm. kind of slavery that's why that's why what's the the number one persecutor of the of christians around the world right now uh, are coming from the muslim faith mm -hmm. which is an absolute pure 100 percent works religion in fact what's interesting is that they, they they make no bones about it the muslims would say they come from ishmael yeah. you know that, yeah. that uh, he's the real son that's it's really amazing how that kind of works yeah you know, what's amazing is when we get to chapter 22, God directs Abraham. He, he says, take Isaac, your only son. He doesn't yeah. even recognize Ishmael as a son. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's a, so Ishmael is, is, has a connection to Abraham and he'll be blessed as we'll see, but he is not as far as the covenant goes. Uh, there's only one son, that's Isaac. Because Abraham is going to have other children after this too, if you know that later on. Um, when after Sarah dies, he'll have another wife, I think Keturah, and they'll have children. But um, but Isaac is the only one that counts as far as the covenant goes for salvation. So, yes. Did you say that Sarah was married before Abraham? No. Okay. No, so but but Abraham will marry after Sarah dies again, and I think around chapter twenty-five or so, we'll 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 have a brief mention of his wife and other children. Um, but it's Isaac is the one. There's no confusion here, um, and that's important because this isn't just a some guy's genealogy. The salvation of the world is at stake here. We need to know. Um which son of Abraham will bring forth the Messiah, the Savior? Where where will salvation come? Is all the nations going to be blessed through Abraham? All right. Through which descendant of Abraham? Is it Ishmael uh, or is it Isaac? And the Muslims would say it's Ishmael. That's what the Quran will tell them. Um, but, all right, so... Um, God then speaks to uh, Abraham. And what does he say? Because Abraham's not happy about this. Do what your wife says. Yeah. Yes. Uh, don't be upset. Uh, do whatever Sarah says. Um why now we don't know what sarah's motives are if they are pure or if she is just um harboring resentment but clearly what she is wanting to happen is the lord's plan and the lord's plan he tells them is this um why should you send off the hagar and the boy uh Uh, why? Because um, it will be through Isaac. 
shall your offspring be named. It's kind of That's interesting. In... Take care of Ishmael too. He'll take care of Ishmael. Second, yeah, Bob, you gonna say something? Sorry. Well, it's just kind of interesting that um, here he's saying, "Okay, send her away." When when she left earlier, he said, it "Told her, no, go back." Yeah, at that uh, at that time, she he he said, has, "Well, she ran away. She wasn't sent away." Right. Right. Yeah. When she ran away, he said, no, go back. And now that she's there for a while, he's saying, no, okay, send her away. Now it's time to go. Yeah. Now, but before there was no Isaac before, so there was no threat to anything. Now they need to establish this. It has to be established that Isaac is the one. Yeah. So she has to go. And that sounds sad for them. Um, however, there is a consolation, consolation prize, we'll call it, for uh, Ishmael. Uh, I'll, we'll, I'll make a nation of the of the son of the slave woman. Yeah, he will become a nation. That's a big deal. I mean, that's that's a that's a pretty big deal to to you know most people just die in obscurity. Most people there's no there's no legacy there. There's no property. You're just you suffer and you die and you're forgotten and that's it. Um, but because of Abraham, um, he will. Be blessed. The same thing as we saw with Lot's daughters. Um, those that's a line that should just be cut off. I mean, after all that disgrace, and yet, even though it was they were conceived in horrible situation, yet because of Abraham, and they're all descendants um, of Terah, um, they will become nations themselves. Even though they will be troublemakers, as will you know the Ishmaelites will give some trouble to Israel as well. So, all right so abraham uh sends them off and where does uh Rachel hagar go Rashiba. and say hagar uh Rashiba. parts and wanders in the wilderness of Beersheba. and do we let me see if i can on the map if we can find Beersheba. Yeah, the map up here. Oh, there it is, right there. Okay. So they were in. Uh, where was Abram? Abraham was he in Gerar, that area? Yeah, so not long, a long ways away. A long ways away, but out in the wilderness, and yeah, she she heads off there. Okay. All right, let's pick it up from there. Fifteen to twenty. Um, we leave off here. Uh, Jack, you want to get that for us? Sure. <clears throat> when the water in the skin was gone, she put the child under one of the bushes. Then she went and sat down opposite him and a good way off, about the distance of a bow shot. For she said, let me not look on the death of, of the child. And as she sat opposite him, she lifted up her voice and wept. And God heard the voice of the boy. And the angel of God called to Hagar from heaven and said to her, What troubles you, Hagar? Fear not, for God has heard the voice of the boy where he is. Up, lift up the boy and hold him fast with your hand, for I will make him into a great nation. Then God opened her, opened her eyes and she saw a well of water. And she went and filled the skin with water and gave the boy a drink. And and God was with the boy, and he grew up. He lived in the wilderness and became an expert with the bow. He lived in the wilderness of Paran, and his mother took a wife for him from the land of Egypt. All right. So um, let's talk about this. It's an interesting situation. So by the way, how old is uh, Ishmael now about this time? 13, 14. Am I even older, actually? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, he was four, when so if he was 14 uh, when Sarah uh, gave birth then it's got to be like at least a year or so after that so he might be about 16 years old yeah so we'll say we'll say is somewhere between is between 14 and 16 years old this time which led, it's a little bit of a different picture now to the story doesn't it 
Yeah, it's not a little baby laying under the bush. It's it's yeah. 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 And so they run out of water. Ishmael's between when the water in the skin was gone. Um was gone. Um she put the child under one of the bushes. So he he has got to be in a very weak state if he is that age and she has to put him under a bush. Um, he's not a baby, you know, he's not a little child um that needs to be so he's clearly uh he's dying, it seems. Um uh, he she, she puts him under one of the bushes, obviously for shade. Um, um, but it the assumption is, I think it's fair to assume, um, Ishmael is dying. Well, it says she doesn't want to look on the depth, the face of his, can't even talk. Yeah. Um, and she can't look upon the death of her son, so she goes off about the distance of a bow shot. Uh, how far is a bow shot? That's a uh, couple hundred feet. Yeah, yeah. Goes off um, maybe a few hundred feet. Wait, so as not not so as not to look. on the death of her son. Hmm. All right, so what does she do next? Uh, so Hagar, uh, verse, and verse 16, uh, says so he lifts up her voice and she wept. But it was the boy's voice that he heard. Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, God heard the voice of the boy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Because he's of Abraham and Hagar isn't. Oh, that's interesting. Possibly. There seems to be a... a, a, a yeah, I think you're right on with that. I think there's there's a sense in which if you're connected to Abraham... Mm. Um, there is God intervenes. There's an intercession part of things. So he heard the voice of the boy, um, and the angel of God called to Hagar in heaven. Um, and so, what is his words to her? Um, fear not. God has heard again the voice of the boy. Okay. All right, lift him up, hold him fast with your hand, for I will make him into a great nation. So God promises to make him into a great nation. Just as we saw before, where God makes a promise and then there's a threat to the promise. As we saw many times with Abraham, God makes the promise that he will have land and blessings and become a nation. And then he, in the next scene, he takes it all away. He loses his wife. He's he's out of the land because, and he's under a famine. There's, there's no blessing. He's got no land and his wife has been taken away. Now, in this scene here, we have, again, God made a promise that he would make a nation out of this boy and now they're out in the wilderness, and this boy is about to die. And so, but God keeps his promise, intervenes. And so how does he intervene here? How Gives God, well. yeah, so he saves, saves Hagar and Ishmael. What happens? Gave her a well of water. <laughs> Uh, yeah, he I, before that though he says something about that verse nineteen. What did God do actually? Opened her eyes. God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water. Um, and then she gave water to the boy, saving his life, 
And then we see that God was with the boy. And he grew up and lived in the wilderness, became an expert with a bow. And then his, his mother takes a wife for him. And where's the wife come from? Egypt. Egypt. Land of Egypt. He lives in the wilderness of Paran. Let's go back up to here. So they live in Bathsheba, and then he goes off into the wilderness of Paran. Let's see that up here. Did I miss it? Yeah, you went by it. Uh, there we go. So they live down here. Interesting. That's really interesting. In the wilderness of Paran, do you know what's over here in the wilderness of Paran? In this area? Yeah, that's the Sinai Desert. Yeah, that's where Mount Sinai is. Yeah. So it's interesting, that connection with Ishmael and Sinai, it's very interesting. So he's dwelling there, um, and she gets a, a, a wife from Egypt for him and grows up. Now, in our story, there's something very interesting about the language that is... Uh, fascinating in this scene, and I'm not sure what it all means. But you'll notice um, it begins in chapter 21. It begins with the Lord visiting Sarah mm -hmm. and the Lord doing to Sarah as he had promised. And then it switches over to God. Mm -hmm. um, God said, God did it, God said, and then his interaction with Hagar is God heard and God called and God opened her eyes and God was with the boy and he grew up. Um, I, interesting. I always get this feeling about um, Ishmael that, I mean, the whole thing with him constantly being basically a thorn for, for uh, Israel uh, you know, his descendants, it always felt to me like that this is almost like a, a a punishment or an obstacle from God because of Abraham and Sarah's lack of faith in his promise to them. Yeah. Originally, he promised that they would he would have a child and they were like, oh, well, you know, this this isn't going to work. So let's, you know, take take my slave girl, you know, to have the child. Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, it is interesting. I, I, I wouldn't. Yeah, I think you're right. There is a. I, I see. If you look at Abraham's journey, it's 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 a growing faith. So it's not a perfect faith from the beginning, but he believes everything he's told. Um, but then there are moments when there are questions, and where things aren't going the way that. They would, and he he takes a a natural response to it that you would, and it doesn't go well. But it's not, uh, it's not unbelief because he's not again. He, if you remember, his going into Hagar was not an act of unbelief, because God had not said at that time that Sarah would be the mother of his children. And so Sarah is giving a human solution to a problem here. Um, it makes things complicated, but it's not an act of rebellion. If God had said it's going to be through Sarah and then he picks up a second wife, that'd be an issue here. But he didn't say it that time. Now he says it and he believes it. I guess, I that, come... yeah, go I ahead. guess that makes a difference because one of the things that was striking me was Adam and Eve. It was Eve that decided we should eat the apple, brought it to Adam, and Adam said, okay. And yeah. in this case, it was Sarah that said, we need to take my handmaid, and he said, okay. Yeah, yeah. So he listens to his wife, and it kind of causes, but it's 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 a tricky one because, again, it's it was a common custom at that time to do that. Yeah. Um, and it is kind of, it is contrary to God's plan for marriage of the two becoming one flesh. But it is sort of the life there that that's the world they're living in. And so, you know, you're coming out of it, which is helpful because for us, I know for each of us here, you know, when we came to the Lord, there was a lot of things that were just still in our natural way of thinking of things. And we believe him, but we have we make a lot of mistakes because we're still operating out of the way that we used to 
and then we naturally think mm -hmm. it was it's not rebellion it's just we haven't really learned we haven't really been taught the right way yet i think that's how it is with abraham here the world has gone so depraved and so dark um that he comes through it and he is He's kind of operating in sort of just assumptions of the way the world sort of is. And everyone feels that way. And it's like, yeah, of course. You know, I'll give you an example of that today is, um, um, you know, like, like birth control. It's like everyone assumes that birth control is the way to go. If you're a young woman, right? Get on the pill. Um, that's just That's just like everyone just took that. That's conventional wisdom. Everyone is like, yeah, yeah, of course. No one speaks against that. Everyone's like, yeah, absolutely. Um, only now they're starting to realize that the the pill is messing women up. And uh, it's they're, they're actually some women coming out and speaking out against it. And it's kind of shocking. But you're, you're kind of we've lived in this in this understanding of. Yeah, I mean, we're against abortion, but birth control is totally cool and fine. No problem with that. Um, and now it's like. A few people are starting to speak out against it, and in, in they're not even Christians. Actually, they're just like this. This isn't healthy. We should really consider this. Um, and now people are trying to look at it again. Oh, wait a minute. You know, maybe you have something there. But you know, Abraham is just—he's just operating the way that everyone's operating here. This is this is the normal way of living. If you you need children, you got to get children, right? You know, children. You're gonna you're gonna die, and you're gonna suffer. It's gonna be miserable. And if your wife can't have children, then you know maybe your servant girl can have children, and you can you can keep this going. Um, that's just the way you do it. Sarah is just operating the way, and Abraham along with her. And again, since God hadn't said at that time it was Sarah, maybe that's the plan. And and God, it's complicated. It gets messy. It has troubles with it, but God will even redeem it as well. So. But I want to come back to this passage here, and the Lord and God. It's, it's really interesting. You'll notice they are when when the Lord is doing things and when God is doing things. Look at the verbs that are used with it here. Just come back to our passage here. There's only two mentions of the Lord, and what does the Lord say in verse 1? What does it say about the Lord? Did to Sarah as promised. Yeah, he it's he did. And he, he visited, as he had said, and he promised. Uh, later on, we see God interacting. And God says to Abraham. And then we have God heard. God called. God has heard. God opens her eyes. And he's with the boy. Um, there's a, when you see the Lord, you know what the Lord means? The the when it's all capitals like that, Yahweh, Jesus, Yahweh, Yahweh. Yeah, it's the Lord. It's it's His personal name, and so we see. And again, I think I think this is kind of a little bit of a clue for us. As you go through the Genesis story, you have the Lord who is interacting with us in a, in a physical way, uh, visiting, doing things, uh, acting upon things, and God who is sort of speaking, like we saw in Genesis one. God speaks, God said, God said, and then Genesis 2, the Lord God planted, the Lord God did these things. And so um, I suggest perhaps that what we're dealing with is, again, this, uh, the father and the son at work here. Uh, the Lord is the one visiting Sarah, as he said, dealing with her and with Abraham. But when he deals with Sarah, it's God um, who is sort of from a distance, the father to the fatherless here. Uh, he has his plan for it, but it's the Lord who's very personally interacting with Sarah and Abraham, as we saw back in chapter, was it 18? Um, what, before he interceded, it said it was the Lord appeared to him by the oaks. Um, the Lord did these things so that we see the Lord interacting physically with Abraham and Sarah. Uh, when it speaks of God with Hagar, it's more not physically like he did with Abraham, but he's still with them. 
blessing them. So again, that that whole phrase, you know, God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ has been helpful to me in seeing the difference between it. So the, the Father and the Son and um, the God who is visible and the God who is invisible, the God who speaks, the God who then carries out the commands and does the will of the Father. So anyway, that's just a little thoughts there. I think we'll break it here. Uh, I just want to say I was, <laughs> as you were talking, I got interested in the difference between Lord and God. And um, I used the Blue Line Bible and uh, looked up the Hebrew in the um, Lord is Yahweh. And in this particular reference, God is Elohim. Yeah. And Elohim is um, divine ones, rulers, judges. So the it's interesting what you were just saying about how he's doing things for them. Yeah. For yeah. The, El the, yeah, the Elohim can be um, a reference to the, the gods, the Elohim, the spiritual beings, but it also can reference to the most high God, the, the, the plural of God. So um, you'll notice God heard the voice of the boy and an, the angel, the angel of God. Right. All to Hagar, the messenger from God. Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, in any case, so there's a lot of subtle interactions that how the way God interacts with people is very interesting. And when we come to the New Testament and, and we see the full doctrine of the Trinity really flushed out for us more, mm. it begins to make a little bit more sense of these passages for us. I so. like to look up the names of God. I just find that they add more depth to what's being discussed. Mm, absolutely. Absolutely. So, all right. Well, we'll break it here if you don't mind. Um, and uh, we'll pick up next week. Uh, oh, well, next week we're not going to meet. So, <laughs>